The Oklahoma legislature is winding down their business, but we needed to bring you one more update on everything that's happening with the Oklahoma legislature and some of the important bills that we've been running, as well as other interesting issues going on this year in legislation. So what all has happened and what's left to happen before they say, that's it, y'all. Welcome back to Talking Real, brought to you by the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. This is episode 169 of Talking Real. We're back here in the Talking Real studio with some excitement coming this week. Nabil, first, how's your day? Day's going great. I'm excited about this week. Yeah. We've got Realtor Day at the Capitol. Yeah. It's like one of our first in-person events that's coming up tomorrow, actually. We're going to be out of the Capitol visiting with our legislators. So if you're listening to this today on Tuesday, you know, come join us at the Capitol. Or even Wednesday morning. Or Wednesday morning. We're also joined here by Josh Cockroft. Josh, how are you today? What's up, guys? How are you? It's good to see you. You too. So talking about Realtor Day at the Capitol, if people wanted to show up tomorrow, I mean, we would still take them, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're not going to refuse service. We reserve the right to refuse service, (laughs) but we're not going to. Um, No, we're we're real excited. So tomorrow uh, at 1130, we're all going to be gathering at the Capitol View Event Center, which is right on Lincoln Boulevard. Uh, on F- Lincoln and 50th Street. So if you see the Capitol, head north two miles. Um, and we're going to gather there. We're going to have some food trucks out there. Uh, we're going to head to the Capitol after that and uh, have some ice cream. Uh, we're, not, we're not allowed to take ice cream into the Capitol uh, just because of health restrictions still. But uh, we're going to have an ice cream truck out there and uh, enjoy some of that with the legislators and their staff. Uh, visit with our legislators a little bit. So like you said, I mean, we're excited just because this is the first in-person event we've had since March yeah. of last year, over a year. We did have an in-person GRI. Well, so, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. We'll, we'll give that, which incidentally, we have another GRI coming up in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of good stuff. I'm excited because I get to teach contracts, do four hours of contracts. Um, and it's in Tulsa. So for all our Tulsa folks out there, we've got a GRI coming to you locally. So you can check that out too by going over to okrealtors.com forward slash events, get signed up and come see me and let's talk about some contracts and a lot of other great things over two days. So, Well, this is my first in this person is, yeah. <laughs> with the association. I've been to others, but yeah, it's good to be back. So yeah, come yeah. check it out. Um, you can go to okrealtors.com forward slash capital conference to see some details. If you do want to come join us, um, obviously the more the merrier to come take advantage of that and come talk to your legislators because there are still lots of important legislative things going on. Also, this is going to be the first time for a lot of our members to see the newly renovated Capitol building. Oh, yeah. It looks looks great. so nice. If you have not been there uh, in really the last week, honestly, because stuff is changing every single week, but if you've not been in there in a while, it is amazing. They have done a fantastic job. So even... If that's the only reason that you're coming tomorrow, come for that reason. It's really cool. Absolutely. Yeah, come check it out and get get a little popsicle. That's right. <laughs> there that's you right. go. There you go. So, well, we wanted Josh to come in as well because we are winding down legislative session, but just because it's winding down doesn't mean things are slowing down. And a lot has happened. Um, you know, we are fortunate that uh, we do have a, a big voice, all 12,000, five, 700, however many. We've got a lot of members now carry a big voice out of the Capitol. And so we're able to have some success, but there's a lot going on out there. So, um, Josh, first of all, you know, our big piece of legislation was the wholesaling yep. legislation bill. As people kind of just a quick reminder, uh, wholesaling has been something we've been paying attention to quite a bit the last couple of years. And this year, some legislation was ran to uh, basically require people who engage in wholesaling to have a real estate license. Right. I mean, that's sort of the short version right. of what we're looking at. So give us an update on that one. Yeah. So uh, this is kind of the, we've been hoping that this was going to be a culmination of three years of work because we've been looking at this issue for three years. Just another testament to the fact that if you have an idea, it's not necessarily just going to fly through uh, in the legislature. You think you have a perfect bill and then it doesn't. So it's taken three years uh, as we've talked about this. So House Bill 1148 was the one that we introduced this year. After several years of uh, work with OREC, 
work through task forces that were put together between OREC and our members, um, study groups, making sure that we were trying to, to, to nail down the exact language. And basically the final product that we came up with was House Bill 1148, which makes real estate, home, uh, uh, real estate wholesaling activities a licensable activity. Um, and so we put that forward. It flew through the House and the Senate um, through a lot of work from uh, our members reaching out to their representatives and senators, uh, work by advocacy staff here at the association level. And I'm very glad to announce that as of a week and a half ago, Governor Stitt actually signed that piece of legislation. So November 1st of this year, uh, real estate wholesaling will be a licensable activity. Now, what that means uh, from a administrative and practical standpoint for for the things that we do as an association, as well as at the agency level with OREC, is OREC is actually going to have a lot more flexibility right now because we've heard the complaints for years now from OREC saying, listen, there's nothing statutorily prohibiting any of this activity going on. People signing contracts um, and backing out at the last second, having no equitable interest, you know, having that equitable interest in a property, and there's just no recourse from the agency level, from the legal level, other than you know an individual having to go through small claims court and racking up attorney fees. Now that is it, that as of November 1st, that it will be in state statute. OREC has the ability to adjust so administrative rules procedures that need to be put into place to make sure that the individuals that are engaging in really the same activities that uh, that happen in a traditional real estate transaction are happening for these wholesaling transactions as well. So administrative rules, you're going to see a lot of, of rules come out probably this next year that we're going to work with OREC on to, to kind of craft exactly what that looks like. But from a statutory standpoint, November 1st, it will be a licensable activity. I think that's great. This is what we've been talking about for yeah. years, that you've got people doing substantially the exact same thing as what real estate licensees do, but they were doing it without a license. And from the the, the bottom line is members of the public need to be protected right. in the event there are people who do bad things. And like, if you want to engage in that profession, then you got to go through the steps of having the license to engage in that pr uh, profession. So uh, that's just, again, it protects everybody. It protects the real estate industry. Um, you know, in terms of, of people doing the right things, being honest with, with people who are buying and selling homes, all those kinds of things. And so um, there just has to be some kind of regulatory recourse, and we're going to have that. Right. So still can wholesale, so you got to have the license to do it. So it's, uh, yeah, I think that's a, a good change, and I'm super excited to hear that we got that done. We got it done. So We always get it done. We always get it done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Josh promised that 100%. Far. Oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so those, uh, I mean, that was the big thing we were working on. Um, anything else specific that, that we were kind of keeping an eye on right now? I mean, there's obviously some general stuff we want to talk about, but anything specific that we need to update people on? No, there, there were a couple bills um, about a month ago that kind of popped up that were some causes for concern around... Um, alien or foreign ownership of land in the state of Oklahoma. We've, we've heard from our members some, uh, a lot of stories of uh, entities coming in trying to buy up land for, uh, for grow farms, for medical marijuana industry obviously is booming in the state right now. And some uncertainty on you know, where, where uh, those entities were from, how, what funds were being used. Um, and, and some of these le some of this legislation that kind of popped up had some concerning language that was going to place real estate professionals right in the middle of these transactions. There were a lot of fair housing questions that popped up based off of the the, the language. It was always it was a little sticky because some of the language was the Speaker of the House's language, so you're trying to navigate that. Um, but happy to say that you know all of the things to this point that we have actively or quote unquote fought this session, things that we, we didn't agree with, um, all of those have gone to the wayside. So at this point now, heading off into the next week or so of session, um, we're just kind of keeping an eye on the general stuff. Like you said, state budget, uh, they're in the process of starting that. Um, so, you know, 
this session overall has gone extremely well for us. That's such nice. great news. Yeah, that's I mean, such great news. Which that's, is six months ago, seven months ago, you you both know because we we've we had these conversations here as staff. Like we were not sure what was going to happen this year right. because of COVID last year all the landlord tenant issues, you know, uh, eviction moratoriums, rental assistance, all these things happening at a national level, we thought we're going to have a huge trickle down effect into the, at the state level and the local level, which then normally generates statutes being written and bills being run. We didn't see a whole lot of that this year. Yeah. Now, that's not to say that it won't come in the future, but uh, you know, I for one was pleasantly pleased and surprised with the the smoothness of this session as far as the issues that we care about and we're working on yeah for plenty of people <laughs> that would say this has not been a smooth yeah session. And that's why I I, I, I I clarified that i did make sure depends on what your issues are <laughs> but from one perspective that's right real estate we're good yeah. no that's that's great i mean that's great news that it's We've got a, a few important things done from both a proactive standpoint as well as sort of a, a, a defensive perspective. Um, and now it's just kind of everything's done in session, but for the final thing that they always work on, which is the the, the major general appropriations bill, yeah. uh, which I kind of had this idea in my head that like, oh, with COVID last year and everything, there was you know a spike of unemployment for at least a period and a lot of money being put out in terms of uh public health measures in terms of unemployment, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Uh, and so I just had this vision that it was going to be just a train wreck of a, right. a, a budget year, but that's not necessarily the case. No, it actually looks like. So um, give us a little overview of, of what the appropriations looks like. Well, as of two weeks ago, it was very uncertain. Um, really, for the last month, you saw a lot of bickering and just a lot of political jockeying between the House, the Senate, the governor's office. The House and Senate were miles apart on multiple uh, budgetary issues. Uh, and so as of this time, like I said, a week and a half, two weeks ago, there was no agreement. Uh, the House and the Senate had made its way through pretty much all of the policy. So things kind of ground to a halt. Last week, it was announced that an agreement had been made between the, the governor's office and the House and the Senate. And uh, things have been moving very quickly since then. In fact, about 30, 45 minutes ago, as we're from when we're recording this, the general appropriations bill actually passed off of the House, House floor 82 to 19. Um, party line vote, which is expected, normally happens every year. Um, but the budget itself, you're looking at about a $1.6 billion increase over last year, um, which just shows that our economy came roaring back in the state of Oklahoma. Now, when I say 1.6 billion over last year, that is still that that's because there was a massive cut last year because there was no money last year. Yeah. 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 Um, so you're kind of getting back up to the levels of where it would have been two years ago. So you kind of have to keep that in mind. But you're looking at a 8.3 billion dollar budget to that that's appropriated this year that the the House just passed. The Senate will pass it on Thursday. Um, and uh, now over the next few days, you have a lot of line item bills that they run for specific agencies. You know, you'll have a Department of Transportation bill, you'll have a DPS bill, a DHS bill, and all of those are the actual statutory limitations on what that agency can spend and what it can spend that money on. Um, so you know, last, yesterday, you had committees, the, the budget committees in the House and Senate move everything out of committees. There's about 50 bills that constitute that $8.3 billion budget. Um, so yeah, you're looking at it at, at an increase for a lot of agencies at and just holding them flat at, with a zero percent increase in some other agencies. Um, so uh, you see some targeted approaches by the legislature, specifically around education. Um, there's a record budget of three point two billion dollars that the legislature is uh, uh, putting into common education, that's about a 17% increase over last year. Um, so education was 
always and always has been a huge focus uh, of the legislature. But you see a lot of other um, economic issues uh, like uh, increasing the amount in the film rebate program to to entice companies to come into the state of Oklahoma, pr produce films and TV. Um, you see a couple uh, tax related issues. Uh, they're looking at reducing the corporate income tax rate from six point uh, six to 4%, so reducing it by 2%. You're looking at a personal income tax reduction of 0.25%. Um, so, you know, there's there's a lot a lot of moving parts that, that that are included in that budget, but, you know, vastly improved, vastly improved over last year's budget. So, um, which is why you see the 82 to 19 vote that, that you just saw through the House. You know, one of the points in there, the the film rebate, mm -hmm. it's interesting to think about Oklahoma as a film studio state. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't think that would, you know, so much you picture, but that's that's great. Well, and it's a, it's a long-term approach that the Department of Commerce uh, industry here in the state has been working on for a long time. Uh, the film rebate program is is over a decade old. But uh, there, there have been a lot of efforts put into, uh, into recruiting businesses to the state of Oklahoma, and it just goes along with everything that state leadership has tried to do over the last decade or so is get people outside of Oklahoma to realize that Oklahoma is not a flyover state anymore, that right. industries are moving in, businesses are moving in, people are moving in. And we see it in the real estate industry. I mean, the, the people are flocking to Oklahoma uh, from coast, East Coast states, West Coast states, um, relocating to a place that has a, a family-friendly atmosphere, has a low cost of living, a low tax burden. Uh, all of that is enticing to people and industry alike. So, I mean, they're, they're, they raised the cap for the film uh rebate program from 8 million to 30 million this year just making sure that that we can continue that that influx of investment into the industry here in the state of Oklahoma which then has a trickle effect into mm -hmm. every other area right I think it's very unique it's very interesting yeah how much that goes hey do they deal anything with the Medicaid expansion I don't I couldn't remember if that was something that had to be dealt with this year or if that's coming up next year because we had that state question where we've now got this constitutional mandate to do the, the right. Medicaid expansion. And I just I was curious how now that we're at end of session, what's gone on on that one? That's sort of a big hot button. issue. Right. It wasn't a question of if it was a how. Right? Exactly. Yeah. The constitutionally mandated too because the people of Oklahoma voted that in. Um, and so that money is included in the budget. So continuing to uh, con continuing to invest in that, I believe about $130 million is being put into uh, expanding that Medicaid program in the state of Oklahoma. The question that has not quite been figured out is how exactly or who is going to provide those services. There's been a big battle between um, managed care uh, companies. I mean, we could get way into the weeds here and <laughs> talking about providers and, and, and all of this, but managed care versus just a straight uh, Medicaid expansion. There's There's been a, a, a huge battle from a policy standpoint. Governor wants to have a managed care approach, uh, allow uh, for out-of-state entities to help manage Oklahoma's uh, healthcare system. A lot of the legislature, a majority of the legislature, wants to keep it in house here to have a little bit more control over it. Um, that's to be determined uh, at this point. But the money is there. The governor is working through the healthcare authority to move towards the managed care approach. But from a policy standpoint, as of uh, this time on Tuesday, before they adjourn signy die at the end of session, nothing has been agreed upon on exactly how that's going to happen. Interesting. Not really a real estate related issue, but it's also <laughs> sure. just kind of it's a big issue that, yeah, we're, it is. that we're dealing yeah. with. Well, it affects everybody. I mean, it yeah. really does. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, just kind of interesting. So I'll be interested to see how that shakes out. And I know the cost of that program will go up over time. It will. There's a lot of federal subsidies right now. There is. So yes. that'll have to be dealt with in due time but 
Um, very interesting. Well, anything else that you think that we need to update people on from the Oklahoma legislature? Well, just just to say that, I mean, we're almost done. Um, <laughs> we were having a conversation this morning, or I was having a conversation with somebody this morning that I couldn't believe that it's already almost June, which means the legislative session is over. They have until the last Friday in May at five o'clock to adjourn sine die. Uh, which is Latin for that's it, y'all, or something like that. Um, no more. Yes. We're out of that, here. That's it, y'all. That's the, that's the translation to it. Um, but uh, they have until that time to, to uh, get through all of their business. Every indication is that they're actually going to end on Friday of this week. Uh, they're churning through those budget bills as we speak. Um, House will have to get it over to the Senate. There's a waiting period between when the house gets it out of the house until the senate can hear it so probably on thursday is when the senate takes care care of all of the bills that the house is sending them today Um, but then adjourning uh, on friday with no plans to come back um, until the next friday where they would adjourn sine die and the reason for that is the governor has five days in session to Uh, sign or veto. So the legislature kind of is holding that as an insurance policy to get out one week early to get all the the uh, the business done one week early so that if and of course this is an agreed upon budget by the governor and the legislature but if for some reason the governor did veto something they would be able to come back before signy die wouldn't have to come back in special session or something like that so they'll probably be wrapped up by Friday of this week and then we'll see you next year. Nice. That's yeah. that's it, y'all. That's it, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple other things. So they're still doing redistricting this year, yeah. which I think is pretty much settled and wrapped up. Yeah, but... it's signed. Uh, the governor signed it. Okay. Uh, last week, so all of the re- uh, all the districts will look a little bit different when you go to the polls next November okay. for the 2022 cycle. Um, everything on that is based off of census data. Very impressive, actually, how the legislature did that this year because they took a very transparent approach. They hired uh, independent consultants to come in and help them. Uh, They did a, I don't even know how many town hall meetings they did across the state, but the House and Senate worked together. Normally, it's a House thing and then a Senate thing, and they do their own maps. They actually worked together this year on this uh, to figure out what exactly each district need to look like held those town hall events where they got feedback from the public um and i mean it's it's a pretty big uh it's a pretty big indicator when you have vast bipartisan support on a redistricting issue because normally it gets i mean or it can get pretty partisan accusations of gerrymandering and Mm -hmm. all of that you know we're carving out republican areas or democrat areas and none of that happened this year so um it Actually, the, both the House and Senate redistricting bills flew through with hardly any discussion. Interesting. Um, and governor signed that into law. So um, there will be about 37,000, no, 38,000 individuals in a House district uh, for uh, state House of Representatives and about 81,000 in a Senate district, which is an increase of about 4.5%, 45 to 5% over last census 10 years ago. Uh, so Oklahoma is growing. Um, and that'll be in effect next uh, next November. So make sure you know <laughs> who your member is now, because actually my senator changed. Okay. So yeah, I haven't looked, but I, I think mine's the same. But yeah. yeah, so I haven't looked either. Interesting. So. Well, there was one more bill that we got passed and signed, right? Did we talk about that one yet? Are you talking about Senate Bill two seven seven? Yes. So yeah, so to, Senate Bill 277 is one that we the one that we worked with uh, Oklahoma Municipal League on on property registries to help clean up uh, dilapidated and abated uh, properties, and so we worked on some agree, agreed language on that. That sailed through the House, had a little bit of opposition in the Senate, but not too much. Um, but that basically says that municipalities can create a registry for the purposes, the sole purpose of uh, contacting an individual of a dilapidated property or building. They can't share that information from anybody. It's not subject to the Open Records Act, um, and they cannot charge a fee for you know getting on that registry or staying on that registry or getting a permit or anything like that. 
um, it's it's 100 uh, percent protected. So that was a that was a big win too because that's another issue since 2014 that we and the municipal league have kind of clashed heads on. They they had one view, we had uh, you know another view. We were concerned about private property rights. They just wanted to make sure that they were, had the ability to clean up areas of the city uh, or uh, or their their town. So. Um, we were able to come together on language on that and got that signed by the the governor and that'll be in effect on november 1st as well nice this was the year of coming together that's right Right. let's come together (laughs) collaboration (laughs) is the name of the game compromise that's right well josh you know appreciate all the work that you do out there so i hope you enjoy the eight month um vacation yes that you're gonna <laughs> see ya <laughs> i wish oh uh, yeah everybody knows that's not true so uh but thanks again we appreciate it, all the updates you bring us i mean it just it's good to keep tabs on what's going out there appreciate all of our members who have been engaged and continue yeah. to stay engaged come out tomorrow to mm-hmm. the capital yes. um, again go to okrealtors.com forward slash capital conference to check out that information, to see where that is, what's going on, the time frame. It'll be 11.30 at the Capital View Event Center is where we're getting started. So come join us. Just come out and see us. Come see your legislator. It's going to yeah. be a good time. Even if you're not registered, come out and, yeah. and join yeah. us. We've you, got you covered. We've got you covered. Mm-hmm. We, we, we ordered food for you already. We got you ice cream, and we got you the Capitol. So. Absolutely. <laughs> we got you everything. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So we look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow. And thanks again, Josh, for giving us another update here. Absolutely. That's right. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button so you know when the next episode is released. And leave us a rating. Write us a review. We love hearing from you. Oh, before we get out of here, I want to mention something else. So Josh and I were invited to go on another podcast on behalf of the association. That's right. Um, (laughs) So there's a podcast in Oklahoma. It's sort of a political um, engaged podcast, but they asked the association to have a couple people on to talk about some stuff. So Josh and I went on that podcast. It's called Let's Pod This. Um, Unfortunately, Josh got to say kind like of. two and a half words and then the power in the office went out. I was working from home, but the power in the office went out. So Josh couldn't get back on. So um, I had to do all of the heavy lifting there. So thanks, Josh. I really appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> no, we appreciate you. <laughs> uh, but hey, go check that out because we um, did talk about a lot of issues like the state of the housing market. We talked about eviction moratoriums, which is actually really kind of important right mm-hmm. now. So people probably saw some news that the eviction moratoriums from the CDC were struck down. Go listen to that podcast because I talk about that. It is sort of struck down, but not really uh, because there's a stay on that order. So don't go doing any eviction that may fall within that moratorium yet because that is not officially done yet. It's on appeal and it's stayed pending that. But yeah, go check that out again. It's Let's Pod This. You can find that on all the various podcast platforms. Um, and it's their most recent episode called something like uh, Building Woes. Something in Building Woes. I don't remember. Uh, but it's the most recent episode that was just recorded. So check that out too. Best podcast I've ever done. I got like two words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thanks again for joining us every week here on Talking Real. And until next time, We'll see you next Tuesday on Talking Real.